Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee and for Barbara Lee Edwards. We are getting more emails from unemployed workers who have received letters saying they are incarcerated. The problem is they are not in jail or prison. As News 8's David Garfordson reports, the notices are coming from the State Employment Development Department informing people they are ineligible to receive benefits. I've been receiving benefits since March of 2020. It's bad enough being unemployed during a pandemic. It's embarrassing and it's, it's um, not happy to talk about it. But this letter from the state unemployment agency adds insult to injury. They say that I was incarcerated, which is not true. Unemployed workers all over the state are receiving these notice letters saying they are incarcerated and ineligible for benefits. They told me that I was in jail and incarcerated and that's why I got the notice of uh, disqualification. Carlsbad resident Eric Munoz is one of five workers who contacted News 8 in recent days. All received the same letters. I didn't need to hear I was incarcerated when I wasn't. That was an absolute stunner for me. Greg Gallagher lives in Northern California. I was kind of blown away. You know, how could they make that mistake and get me confused like that? Both men were told they had to file an appeal a process that can take up to three months or longer. Meanwhile, their benefits are cut off. I've paid into the system for such a long time and, you know, done my share and it's, uh, you know, it's supposed to be an insurance program. It was extremely frustrating. The newly hired director of EDD, Rita Sains, was asked about the incarceration letters during a conference call last week. We know that there are gaps in some of the fraud tools that we're using. The director said EDD recently hired an outside security firm to flag fraudulent claims filed by prison inmates. And in an effort to weed out fraud, some legitimate claimants received the notice letters by mistake. I can't imagine being in a situation where you're already having trouble and then somebody says you were in jail and you weren't. Uh, I don't know how that happened either, and they're trying to get to the bottom of that. EDD managers apologized to those claimants during the conference call last week, and they're promising to reinstate the legitimate claims. Carlo? What a nightmare. David, did any of these people filing for benefits have a criminal history or history of incarceration? The unemployed workers who contacted us, none of them had ever been in prison. Some of them had been in county lockup. Uh, for a short time uh, years ago, but those old cases should have no effect on their current unemploy uh, unemployment claims during this pandemic. Man, just one of those things. We see one problem happen with the fraud, then we see the correction, and sometimes it's an overcorrection impacting people. Uh, David Crawfordson reporting live. Thanks, David. Diego teachers, police officers, and grocery workers can start getting the COVID vaccine starting this weekend. The announcement comes as the county works through a massive backlog of appointments following delays at the Petco Park Superstation last week. News 8's Brandon Lewis of our vaccine team explains what's ahead as the county gets ready to expand access. There's a lot of frustration on the vaccine front. The appointments are really hard to come by because so many of them were recently canceled and had to be rescheduled. The county says it is trying to work through as many of them as they can and acknowledge the frustration. Long lines continued at the Petco Park Superstation as seniors and healthcare workers wait to get their vaccine. The county is trying to catch up after last week's weather delay. So far, more than 68% of the county's seniors have gotten at least one shot and vaccines have reached all long-term care facilities. More than 783,000 uh, vaccines administered, uh, which means that one in five San Diegans, 20% of San Diegans have received at least that initial first dose. The Chula Vista Superstation was packed today, but previously saw some slack in the appointment system, prompting the county to open appointments for more than a half million teachers, food workers, and emergency services workers like police officers on Saturday. That's two days before expected. They plan to prioritize those who work in the hardest hit areas. We need folks to be patient. Uh, we're not seeing all of the first doses utilized by our seniors, and so we're ready to move to this next tier. 
We think we'll be ready to go. We know we'll be ready to go on Saturday instead of Monday. The announcement comes amid frustration over rescheduled second dose appointments. The county says one problem is many were given Moderna's shot a month ago, and now they're mostly getting Pfizer's. We've had instability. We've had a big shortage of Moderna. Uh, so we've been canceling second dose appointments for Moderna while people are opening up new first doses of Pfizer. Uh, and it's just what comes in and when it comes in and what people have available. Nationwide, the goal is to have a vaccine available to all Americans who want one by the summer. Now, we are on track for that, and the county says we could actually exceed that goal if the vaccine shipments would arrive. Thanks, Brandon. Let's hope the supply keeps coming. Yeah. There is mixed reaction to San Diego Unified's announcement of returning to the classroom in April. Certain criteria must first be met, like the county being in the red tier and all campuses having the proper safety precautions. The district's board president says they are confident they will be able to return to a hybrid model by April 12th, but some parents say they are not getting excited just yet. It's not necessarily that it's too little too late. It's just that we're tired of the hope and despair cycle that we've been on all year long. Distance learning will remain an option for students whose parents don't feel comfortable sending them back to the classrooms just yet. A San Diego judge reaffirmed his decision today, ruling that all youth sports, indoor and outdoor, may resume immediately in San Diego County. According to the group Let Them Play, this sets the stage for youth sports throughout California to challenge and overturn Governor Newsom's recently released guidelines for sports to resume. Under those rules, outdoor high school sports can resume starting Friday if the case rate in a county is at 14 per 100,000 people. San Diego is currently at 15. According to Scripps Ranch football coach Marlon Gardinera, who won the judgment overturning the governor's restrictions, CIF has agreed to follow the order, indicating the wait for new numbers from the county is no longer a factor. No word yet, though, on if this decision will be appealed. The case goes back to court March 5th. That's when a judge will determine if this temporary injunction becomes permanent. Today, the county is reporting more progress in the fight against COVID-19. 658 new cases out of more than 15,000 tests. That's about a 4% positivity rate. Our 14-day rolling average is now down to 4.6%. Hospitalizations and ICU patients continue to decline as well. In just one week, hospitalizations have dropped by 202 and ICUs by 69 beds. But 12 more deaths were reported today. Golf legend Tiger Woods is awake and responsive after suffering severe leg injuries in a rollover crash yesterday in Rancho Palos Verdes. Investigators say the crash was purely an accident, but as Chris Martinez reports, they still plan to examine data from a black box inside the car. L.A. County Sheriff's Deputy Carlos Gonzalez was among the first on the scene after Tiger Woods crashed his SUV along a hilly street south of Los Angeles. I'm asking him things like, hey, do you know where you are today? Um, do you know what day it is? Do you have any pain anywhere? And, and he's, he's able to answer me um, quickly. According to a statement posted on the golfer's Twitter page, doctors put a rod in his right tibia and used screws and pins to stabilize his ankle and foot. CBS News medical contributor Dr. David Angus estimates it could take six months for Woods to heal from his injuries. They actually had to put a slit in each of the muscles to allow the pressure to be relieved. So it's going to take a while to retrain these muscles, to enable these bones to heal over the rod and to enable him to walk again. Investigators say Woods seatbelt likely saved his life. How and why he lost control of the vehicle remains a mystery. The accident was the latest setback for Woods after a decade of injuries, personal struggles, and multiple back surgeries. His impact uh, is, is, is profound. His impact is perpetual. Um, and uh, we're excited to, to help him overcome his injuries, to help him recover. The pro golf community and the world are now rallying around Woods as he faces one of the greatest challenges of his life. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Torrance, California. This crash is the third serious auto incident for Woods. Back in 2009, his SUV slammed into a tree just days after revelations of infidelity that cost him sponsorships and landed him in rehab. We would like to take this time now to update you about our friend and News 8 anchor, Barbara Lee Edwards. It's been two months since she had a health scare, but she is on the road to recovery. 
She was even up for a visitor today. Yes, I got a chance to go see her today. It was so wonderful to catch up with her in person. We sat in her backyard, socially distanced, and chatted over coffee and homemade banana bread. Thank you, Barb. It was delicious. It really has been a long two months for Barbara Lee. It was in the early hours of Christmas Eve when she was admitted to the ICU at Scripps La Jolla after suffering a brain bleed. Super scary, of course, but she is doing much better now. Her vision still a bit blurry and she has sensitivity to light. So she has an amazing collection of beautiful big hats. So we're laughing about today, but she is slowly recovering from trauma. And as you can see from this photo, she still has a sense of humor. It was so great to laugh with her, smile with her, and want to thank her daughter Kirsten for capturing these fun moments. Barbara Lee says mornings are best for her. She does a lot of puzzles to keep her brain active and gets a lot of snuggles with her two pups. She is updating her social media pages from time to time, so be sure to follow her on Instagram and Facebook. But today, she wanted me to pass along a huge thank you to our KFMB family and all of our viewers who have reached out to ask how she's doing. In fact, you see these beautiful orchids right here? Gorgeous. They were sent to our station from viewers Rob and Kathy Young, so I brought them to her today, and they just really lit up her face, as you can see. She's feeling everyone's love and well wishes as she makes her recovery slowly but surely. And Carlo, I know you also had a chance to talk to Barb for a while today. Uh, she's really just grateful for everyone's care and concern. She had to check in. Like I said, we miss her. You know, we work alongside her every day, and this is a, a frustrating time for all of us. We'd like her to get better quick and get back here fast, but this takes some time, and uh, she's going on this journey, and we're just going to be here when she gets finished with it and yeah. gets back to us. Getting a little teary-eyed, emotional, because it is, it is, look, but <laughs> when you see how much we got to laugh today, it was just nice to see her good. light up. It's good to so, see her that way. Yeah, nice we miss you, Barb, too. and I'll just yeah. keep your seat warm until you get back, okay? <laughs> We're waiting for <laughs> Call you. Me. We'll still wait. A little, uh, yeah.